Hi, I'm Rick Kaufman, Technical Marketing Engineer for the Technical Enablement Team here at Aruba Networks, and this is the Aruba RESTful Automation Series. Yeah, we mean it. This is Episode 10. We're, we're getting there, folks. In this episode, we are going to actually put an application together to start wrapping up all these things we've been talking about, API calls, Jinja 2, Mongo Database, all these things. We're going to bring them together and start pulling information from Aruba Central. This is gonna be tricky, but I think we can pull it off. And I am just so thankful that you've stuck with me this long. We've got just a couple more episodes to go, and we're gonna wrap it all up for you. We'll start a brand new episode on something completely different. So join me for this episode, and let's get started for the lecture. This is the Aruba RESTful Automation Series, episode 10, Aruba Central Script. We're gonna use Python to programmatically interact with the API of Aruba Central. But before we do that, we are gonna to wanna to use a Python binding called PyCentral. And we're gonna use PyCentral read the docs to learn what APIs are covered in PyCentral. Now, somebody can build a system with an API and somebody can write a Python binding for it, but that Python binding may or may not map 100% across. So we're going to use PyCentral's documentation to see what we can use and what we can't use. Okay, but before we do that, we're going to install PyCentral into our Python environment. If you do not already have it in your Python environment, you will say pip3 install PyCentral, and that should download it. We can now use it in our script. So we'll continue with the documentation here. We'll go to PyCentral, and we can see the configuration module. Now, if we use the selector wheel in the, in the swagger, we could pick configuration and we could see get groups. So we're gonna look at the configuration module documentation here, and then we'll go down here. This is the documentation for the get groups. These are the parameters that API requires. So when we use this, we can just say get groups, pass in our connector, and then the parameters. It's super easy to code. And you'll see that when we get started here. And the way we make this happen is we have to give multiple items of identification to Aruba Central to get a token. And right, so we wrap all that login information up in Central Info. Then we import that into this other script called ClientPy. And in ClientPy, I have a function called getClient. Now, if I import ClientPy into my getGroupsPy, now all I have to do is say my token equals getClient. And getClient will go look at central info and it'll log in on Rupa Central and it will get that token and bring that token back. And now I will have the token. So that's how we're going to make this happen. So this is kind of a picture of it, but let's see how it works in the code. I have a dictionary, a Python dictionary, called central info here with my username and password. Now, I know those already, right? But the client ID, the client secret, the customer ID, and even the base URL, unknown to me. So I need to go find these. This just happens to be my API gateway I'm using, but I'll show you where to find yours. Here, when we log back into Aruba Central, we'll see the client ID and the client secret here. We're going to copy and paste those into our Python dictionary. The last thing we need is the customer ID. And we can click on the little man at the top, and you'll be able to copy and paste your customer ID. Now, don't get the word customer ID. Just get the ID number. And we're going to paste that all into our script and run it. Now, here, if you go to developeraruba-networks.com, um, you'll find, if you dig through here, to OAuth APIs for access tokens, you can see a list of the API gateways. So that's where you're going to copy that from. And then once you paste it all into your central info Python dictionary in a Python file called central info, we'll be ready to go. This is all the stuff we need to get in, get a token, refresh tokens. This will let your script run every single time. Now we take this central info dictionary, I call it central info pi, so I could import that 
into my client application. So here I'm just simply going from the utility directory, get this Python file called central info, and I want to import the function in it called central info. So now when I have a function down here called get client, I'm using that information from central info and passing it to the Aruba central base class. When all that happens, I get something called a client that I can return. So now I'm going to take that client.py file from utility.client.py. We don't put the .py on there. We're going to import the get client function. So now in my script, when I say get client, it's going in and logging into Aruba Central and getting that token that we need and bringing that token back. So in this script, I'm just using the groups class from the Python binding, and I just assign it to G, and then I'm just saying G for the groups class, get groups, and here's the token. Okay, let's see how this works in the demo. The demo environment is going to be our standard demo environment with the one container running Flask and the other container running MongoDB and using 5004 to access the demo. In order to interact with Aruba Central API, we need to have some form of identity to get an OAuth token. And these are the 06 things here that we need to pick up. Now, two of them we know, the username and password. You got that down. But where do we find the other four? Let me show you real quick where we find that. So to get the client ID, secret, and custom ID, we'll just go over to Aruba Central. And first of all, this little icon up here, I can get the customer ID. We'll grab that. We'll paste it in here where we have customer ID. Then the others, remember we had that swagger session we did. So we should know where the remote, the REST API gateway is and our tokens that we had generated for us. So we see our tokens down here, but up in this line, there's two things up here. There's the client ID and the client secret. And you just have to simply grab the client ID, put it right there, go back, pick up the client secret right there, and post that. We're almost there. We just need to get the base URL. If we go to developer.arubanetworks.com, and we slide down under here, OAuth APIs for access token. You'll see if you go down the page just a little bit, there's a list of gateways. I'm using US West 4. I'm going to copy that and always have the HTTPS there or it will not work. Don't, don't do what I did. You'll find out the hard way. So there we go. So if we have that, we're going to go ahead and run our get group script. Now this get group script, I import from the utility directory, something called client, client pi. And in it is a function called get client, because I'm just saying get client here and I get a token. Well, if I look in client pi, client pi is talking to the Aruba central base class to get that token, to return it, but it's pulling in the central info dictionary right here from the central info pi file in the utility directory. That's how it works. Let's see it run in action. Go ahead and clear this. Now, before we do this, let's take a quick look inside Aruba Central. And we can see if we go to global, we have groups. We have one, two, three, four, five groups. So if we go out and we say, let's say Python 3, get groups is the Python file we just looked at. And it goes out and it talks to Aruba Central, gets the access token, and it comes back and gives us our groups from the group API. So we're using that Python binding, PyCentral, and we're using the get groups method inside that class. And that gets us the group. So if I took this central info Py file right here and I copied it down to another um, application you can download. It's called Flask Aruba Central. You're simply going to get clone 
the Flask of Rube Central from my GitHub repository. And then you can open up the utility directory and find central info there and put your central info there. With that in there, we're going to go back to this directory, docker compose up dash D, and we should get a web service running and we can point our browser at that and it will look like this. This application has a groups menu where I can say get groups. So I just went out to Aruba Central, got the groups and brought them back. Now I'm showing them on the screen in the table. That's all I'm doing. I just went to Aruba Central, said, give me the groups. Here's the groups. Now I can go to Aruba Central now and I can add a group. So I can add a group called test one, two, three. And this is actually adding the group in Aruba Central. So I can say add group. And if we want, we took a look at Aruba Central, we would see that we have a group called test one, two, three. Now we can use our application, this Flask application, to delete that group as well. So we can say delete group, we can pick test one, two, three, and we can delete that. And then we can see in Aruba Central for that group, test one, two, three is gone. Okay, so what if I wanna do some more stuff, right? What if I wanted to go to Aruba Central and get the listing of the groups and put them in a Mongo database in this application running on another container? And you can see that we have nothing in this Mongo database. So I'm going to go out to Mongo I'm saying, go to Aruba Central, get the listing of the groups, bring them back to this application, and we're gonna store them in the Mongo database that's running on another container. That's what we're gonna do. It said our task was complete. We go back and look at MongoDB, and there are the records stored in the Mongo database. I just wanted to show you this. So you know how to get that Flask application down, the one we just saw, the one that actually talks to the API in Ruby Central using the central info and is able to pull that information down and store it in Mongo databases. I want you to have that application because it's going to come in handy. It's a great place to start. I want you to download it and look the code over and see if you have any questions. So here it is. HTTPS, we're going to get clone HTTPS, getup.com, XOD442, and we're looking for the flask underscore aruba underscore central dot get. If we do that in our op directory and we go ahead and enter that command, it will download. And you can see we can change to flask and we can ls, and there's all of our code. And yes, docker dash compose up dash d gets our application running. And as always, if we need to know what port it's on, we can open Docker Desktop and look and find our Aruba Central Web is running on 5001. Now you know that we can use Python and PyMongo and APIs from Aruba Central and start putting some automation together. Now, you haven't really seen that much, but what we have here is a great beginning to start being able to work with other APIs and interact with them and the data that they share. So please stay curious, my friends. Always Google the error message. Now I want you to stick with us because we've only got two more episodes left. And in the next episode, we're gonna learn about Stackstorm. And Stackstorm lets us take automation packages that other people have already written and integrate them with the automation we are writing. So it makes it super easy for us to talk to other systems because it's already written for us. Make sure you tune in for that, episode 11. Now, I want you to keep the dream alive at developer.arubanetworks.com and devhubarubanetworks.com. Great stuff, I know you got an Aruba Central account already, you seeker of knowledge that's what's going to make this great. I want you to get your hands on this and actually try it out. And as always, if you need help in any higher level learning, udemy.com, coursera.com, linkedin.com. Thank you so much for hanging with us and let's see you in the next episode.